Hello everybody, welcome back to the burrow. So today, I'm going to be making a very quick video because I need to get out and ship this. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be packaging and shipping the tarantula that was given away in my, well, my giveaway. Um, this will be the first time I've ever done a packing and I am doing it in a way hopefully that will be very easy for a beginner, a first time ever getting one shipped, to get the tarantula out into its home without much issue. That's because the person who won the giveaway had gotten a chocolate gold knee from the exact same vendor that I got this from the day before he won. Now he obviously could keep it and have a second one that wouldn't be an issue, but he asked me if I knew anybody who never had one before that was in the the, uh, the giveaway that entered. Of course I knew one of my subscribers that had never had one and wanted one, so he offered to give it to that person, and that is who I'm shipping it to today. So I wanted to thank him for doing something that was actually very, very nice and kind, and uh, helping to get somebody brand new hopefully into the hobby. Okay, let's get into what I'm doing here. My goal is to take this very small sling, well, he's not very small, but he's small, and put him into the straw. The reason that is, is because when you put him in the straw, you fill both ends with a little bit of paper or cotton. It makes it very easy for the person who gets it to just push the cotton and push the tarantula out into the enclosure that I'm also sending, which makes it very easy, no handling, no no, no chance really or very slim chance of it getting away or anything like that or having any issues so just to minimize that for a beginner so what you want to do is you want to take the straw and you want to cut just a length of it off I'm going to be shipping it inside the enclosure so I want it about the same size so I'll cut it about right there so you take a little piece of just I'm using toilet paper but you can use um, cotton balls something like that you just want to fill the end. So put it in there and just start spinning it. Work it in. And soon you'll have it in. Okay, once you have the toilet paper or whatever you have in one end, I would suggest using a pin and just putting some holes in it. Just some really small ones. Uh, I'm pretty sure the air can get through whatever you put in the end enough, but i just like to be better safe than sorry, you know? But now we gotta put the tarantula in. It's also a very simple thing to do. What you do is you make a funnel out of paper. Okay, so now once you have a funnel made out of paper, very simply just roll it up to a cone shape, tape it so it doesn't come apart, I snip both ends so that it's flush, and now let's put the tarantula in. All you gotta do is take your funnel you just made, put it on one end, and then just guide the tarantula down into here, into the straw, take the end out, and then plug the other end with another piece of toilet paper or cotton ball or whatever it is that you're planning on using, and he's ready to go. He's not a very flighty type, so I'm not too worried about it. Now I'm literally just going to cup him. He already went in. Now, sorry if you can see that. I just cupped him in there like I would with a catch cup. Now I can guide him down in. He'll go down to the straw. There we go. Now I probably should have made this, roll this up beforehand. But he should be just fine. Right there. Roll the said roll the toilet paper back up again. Or actually you square, fold it in half to make it thick enough. And then you roll it. He's down there pretty much in the middle of it. He's pretty snug in there. Safe. He's not gonna bounce around. He doesn't really need water because he's such a, a dry type of spider and he had enough water in his enclosure, so I know he doesn't like dehydrated. It's only a two day trip. Now you slowly just work the, the toilet paper, the cotton in. Some people use the cotton balls with some tweezers. Now you can look at it, you can see if you put in the light how much room the tarantula has. He has a little bit of room to move. Take the end, the excess, snip it off. And now you have them all ready to ship. Okay, now I want to get him ready 
to ship. So I'm going to put him in here. He should fit just fine. I don't want them to crush him or anything kind of dumb like that while shipping. I'm sorry if this gets loud. But I'm just going to put some of this bubble wrap that I managed to not pop when I got it. I know it's not the easiest thing for people to do. And that shouldn't block all the air. As you know, we already put I already put some air holes in the container. So there, there he is. Safe in the bottom there. Putting the lid on. And I'm gonna take a little bit of tape. I'm sorry if this goes up your enclosure a little bit, but I care a little bit more about the spider. You can always get it off. A little bit of lighter fluid gets it off. Vegetable oil supposedly gets it off if there's any left on. Now the lid won't come off. The air holes are drilled. It holds on the side, so he should be perfectly comfortable inside this little enclosure for a two-day trip. Now it's time to put him away. This side. This is the box I have. This is the box that my uh, grandma stole a poker. A poker piece was say That's what I'm shipping. Uh, this is the box my grandma's little polka came in, my uh, Brazilian black. So I'm just going to reuse it. That's why I keep it around. Now when you're shipping anywhere that's winter, make sure you line it fully with styrofoam. This is actually stuff that you can get from just Home Depot. This is home insulation foam, which makes it actually very good for insulation. Better than the white foam, actually, that people tend to use. So I got that. Now I'm going to put him down on the bottom. Here's the dirt that I said, the substrate. That's just peat moss that I'm sending because this is a species that just likes to dry, so I'm not going to waste my time with um, dirt or anything like that. I'm going to be sending the paintbrush, like I said, the leaf for a hide. And now I have some of these white foam bullet peanuts. We'll put them in there. To get them down the sides and stuff. There we go. Top. I'm sorry if this gets loud. This on top. And now that's ready to ship. Now for the heat pack. So I'm gonna open up the heat pack. This is a 40 hour heat pack. I've actually never read the instructions on these things. Uh, simply use... Uh, okay, so apparently you don't have to do anything. Once you just take it out, it should start warming up. It takes about 30 minutes to warm up, so we're not going to be able to feel that. Take some of the paper towel. You do not want this. Directly touching pretty much anything, apparently. That's the way it seems to me. Yeah, that's enough. I don't need that last piece. Put it there. I'm going to tape it to the top foam piece. Okay, now that we have it all taped to the top, it should start warming up here. So actually, I can already start feeling it warming up, so that's good. Now what you want to do is just put the foam on the top, seal it up. Now this actually, you feel, presses down. That gives us a lot more, obviously, a firmer hold on what's in there so it doesn't shake around as much. All right, put that down, put that over top. And now all I got to do, is tape it up, put the address on, and ship it. And that's what we're gonna do right now. Okay, now, I rushed past one part here and I do want to explain it a little bit better for the person that is receiving this tarantula. When you get it, you can put the substrate in, okay? 
Then, all you gotta do to put your tarantula in its enclosure is pull one end of the um, toilet paper out that I have in there. Just pull it out with uh, tweezers or something, get it out. Uh, carefully, make sure that the tarantula does not run out with it. So keep an eye on it, pull it out, be careful. Set it down in the enclosure. Maybe put the leaf in, set this end under the leaf just so that you have less chance of it running. You can even set the top kind of on it. Just anything you can do to help prevent running. So I would do it like that. So now you have the smallest opening, if you're that worried. Take the paintbrush that I'm sending, and you can slowly push the other side of the toilet paper through. This will force the tarantula slowly out the other side. It'll come running out into its hide, or it'll just step out slowly. You can put the lid on, slide it on, and you'll have no problems whatsoever. That's why I was saying to you in the way that I am. It makes it very, very simple to transfer it from this tube into the enclosure. So hopefully that'll help you with that. Now for care-wise, the like the Chuggle Goldney or the Grebbelstola Poker piece likes it uh, dry, so do not soak the ground. What you want to do is just find a corner or side and wet that down, let it dry out, wet it down again when it dries out. Just one side, so it has a place it can go to and it's hide or around, stand around that is dry. For feeding, one pinhead cricket. Um, he could probably take a mealworm. He may be bigger for a mealworm. He's probably a little too big for fruit flies. You don't want to deal with those anyway. So your best bet is to try to find a place, buy a dozen pinhead crickets for a dollar, put them inside of a little Tupperware container. Um, they eat. You can put dog food, fish flakes, that kind of stuff in there to help fatten them up a little bit. Um, keep them to feed and feed him one pinhead to two pinheads a week. That is it. Don't overfeed him. It's not really good for him. It will help rush him to get bigger. Some people power feed. Um, I don't promote that. But So I would say feed him one, maybe two pinheads a week, and that is it. Um, fair warning, he is going to grow slow. He's not a fast grower. So don't expect to have a six-inch spider at the end of the year. You're probably going to have maybe a two-inch spider by the end of the year. Like If that, these are very, very, very slow growers. But they are very pretty when they get bigger. They are much more gentle than most tarantulas out there. I don't promote holding. But these are some of the more likely to be able to. So I hopefully that will help you get a start. And if you need any help, you can always contact me. And you obviously know how to contact me. Um, so I will give you any help or any answer questions you need. Uh, the other thing I want to warn you, since you are very, very uh, new at this, is your first tarantula. If you see your tarantula flipped over onto its back... It's not dead, okay? Most new keepers freak out when they first see this. It's just the molting process. He's just shedding its skin. He's gonna push that off. He'll flip back over and he'll get a little bit bigger. He'll look, usually they look a little more vibrant and lively afterwards. And when you see that, don't feed him for three, four, five days. I usually wait about a week after a molting for a sling uh, and then feed him again because he needs to harden up before he can eat. So just don't freak out if you see it flipped over. It's actually a very good thing. And um, don't go like throwing him in the garbage or burying him because you think your, your tarantula is dead. He's not. And I know that's a very, very common mistake for many new keepers. So I just want to let you know that. And, uh, well, let me go get this guy shipped out now. And uh, hopefully you enjoy him. Talk to you soon. Well, that's about it for this video, everybody. Sorry it's a bit rushed, but I had to make it FedEx before they closed. Before I go, I am going to be linking a video by Tom Moran. It is his Grandma Stole a Poker Piece husbandry video. Jack Slivin, the winner of the sling. I suggest you go watch that video. Uh, Tom has vastly more knowledge on the subject than I do. His videos are highly entertaining. And it will give you a chance to see what your little tiny sling you're getting will eventually grow up into me. And as always, thank you for watching.